The yellow fields behind me are the reed beds. Reed is a plant which expands a lot across the Baltic seashore. This will be a story about Latvians, Estonians and Finns trying to find out the new ways of using this material or a plant. This is Phragmites australis, or the common reed. To grow it requires soil that is moist and rich in nutrients, just like the soil in the coastal areas of the Baltic Sea and lakes. During the last 50 years, nature has changed because of human activities and rapid invasion of reeds has been evidenced. Tas pats fosfors no slāpiklis nāk no tālās šķīles, zalpēti ar aktuviem vai varbūt tepat tās no Ukraiņas, bet tas ir enerģijas avots, kurš šeit agrāk nav bīst. The phosphorus and other nutrients got into the soil as a result of agricultural and cattle breeding activities. Fertilizers from the farm fields were washed into the lakes and the sea along with rainwater, therefore enabling a growing environment for reed plantations. The territories covered by the plant has expanded in Finland, in Estonia, Latvia and in other European countries. There is too much of reed and it's growing fast because there is a lot of uh, eutrophication to the water systems and there are low, uh, no more of the cattle in the meadows and uh, it has an uh, influence to the, uh, to the landscape. It affects uh, the biodiversity of uh, coastal areas. With respect to these circumstances, research is being carried out in all three countries, taking into consideration not only how to free the overgrown areas, but also how to put the reeds into use. In Finland, for three years, reeds will be cut in different locations and the effect of these activities on nature processes will be monitored. It is presently estimated that in southern Finnish coastal areas, it is necessary to restore 7,000 hectares of wet meadows and cut 12,500 hectares of reed stands. The total amount of reed stands in southern Finland coastal areas is 30,000 hectares, and in the whole of Finland, approximately 100,000 hectares. Reed growths occupy territories also in Estonia and Latvia. Measurements carried out in 2007 in Estonia report total reed beds of 28,000 hectares, out of which 13,000 hectares might be used. Studies in Latvia have been carried out to a lesser extent. However, expansion of reed beds is evidenced by the measurements made by distinguished hydrologist Arvids Pastors, according to which open water areas of 70 square kilometers have disappeared during the last 50 years, the majority of which have been overgrown with reeds. Reeds present so many positive qualities that the use of reeds in coastal areas is nothing unexpected. Reeds grow fast. The stalk is hard, water, and sun resistant. The air ducts inside the stalk ensure good sound and heat insulation features. The reed biomass is almost as energy efficient as wood. Therefore, it can be used as a material in crafts, construction, and energy production. Reed is a northern bamboo. It grows fast, converts into wood, and becomes a flexible and durable material which can be used in many different ways. In comparison with other grasses, the reed is considered the most durable one. In addition to the typical connection joints, the reed stalk consists of numerous tiny ducts that make the stalk extra durable. The reeds growing in coastal areas of the sea contain silicon, which increases the stalk's resistance against the impact of the sun and wind. On 
kā, kā šito te un uh, es te dzirdēju viņam tāds foršs stāsts. Viņš ir baigi vidē draudzīgs, ne? Tai pat pļautas ir, nu, 500 metru attālumā. Tai pat atvestas ar ragavām un tagad viņš ir uz jumta. Tur nav nekāda starpkoza, transporta nekāda. nekāda. Jack te padās pļauj, ar ragavām atvest un te pat liek. There are many ways that reed biomass can be used. Reed roof construction is one of the most profitable, not only in Latvia and Estonia, but in other countries as well. Adam Ooms from Sweden has thatched reed roofs for 40 years and is proof that it can be a profitable business. If you're living near, near water with reed and you need a roof, you cut reed. So that's my... So I was... Uh, of course, they, they said to me uh, when I started in the 70s, thatching? Are you going to be a thatcher? Jesus, there's no, no future in that. But I showed them the difference. There is a future, definitely, for, for using the materials nearby and putting on the roof. A reed thatching is one of the most durable roofs. A reed layer of 30 centimeters thatched by the hands of a good master can serve for as long as 80 years. Only the tile roof can equal it. However, tile roofs lack a number of other positive qualities. Vasara, ēkā ir vēsi, nav vajadzīgs kondicionērs. Ziemā ēk ir silt. Ja uzliek normāli 30 cm biez un iedri jumtu, un ja mēs gribam, teiksim, augšu stāvu izbūvēt kā dzīvojumu, un tad mums kā maksimums vēl vajag 5 cm biezu izolācijas vat, ja, un mēs liekam jau apšūlumu dēlīšu veiplē un visi kārtībā. Ja. ja mēs ņemam pārējos visi jumtu klājumus, viņiem visiem ir rentās kārtas ir vajadzīgs. Ja, Tātad pamata kārta apakšā kaut kāda e, skaida plata, kas viņi satur, ja, un, un visi pārējās kārtas, un plus vēl vismaz 20 cm biez izolācijas kārta. To thatch a reed roof, you need good quality reeds, a number of tools, and the hands of an experienced master. Reeds can be placed directly on the battens. No other preparatory works are necessary. I go to the same as the other instrument. How many scores out? Should I say leak? I should I say, which part is the most dangerous? Which part is the most dangerous? The most dangerous. 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 The most Katra nieda atdurās kat savā caurumiņā, un tāpēc viņš veidos tās pakāpīs. Katrās salaižam kopā to visu. Un kā tev šito sauc? Tas ir garais. Ar to mēs ieliekam atkal no citā iekšā, lai mēs tiekam pie tās latas plātās iedrēm. Also in the Sodoma and Muhu Islands of Estonia, reed roofs have been used for centuries. In modern times, homeowners try to set the buildings in the environment and therefore they continue to use reeds. The company Muhro thatches about six to 8,000 square meters of reed roofing per year. This means approximately 30 roofs, both in Estonia and elsewhere in Europe. The office of the Bioland Company in Finland presently boasts the biggest reed roof in the northern countries. It is a good example of the fact that reed roof structures can be extremely complicated, at the same time maintaining the roof's functionality. We are not so much reed roof because of uh, this is so much north, north and uh, because of uh, snow and ice and very cold winter times, a little bit uh, afraid about that. But um, today, uh, winter are not, no more so cold, no more so much snow, and uh, that's why we like to test if it's already possible to, to make here. The reed is a dry and very combustible material. However, once fire safety is considered, when constructing the roof, the hazardness can be reduced to a minimum. Tas ir mīts, ka viņš ļoti uguns nedroši. Šitā te blīvs, viņš ir tāpat kā grāmatas, papīrs dēk, bet grāmatas nedēk. 
At present, the policies are being developed in the European Union to give a green light for the roofers to go inside the cities, to use a reed materials even as a decoration over the concrete base. This gives a new opportunities for the roofers. The reed can also be used widely in construction, thus exploiting its good heat insulation qualities. The scientists at the Estonian University of Life Sciences have established that heating insulation provided by reeds is equivalent to that provided by straw bales. It's well known that the best isolating material in the world is an air. Air trapped inside the reed. Reeds, wires and very good isolating mate. The Estonian company Rumaya manufactures heat insulation blocks. The machine assembled at the beginning of the previous century is serviced by only one person. Estonians do produce two types of a plate. This goes under the plast and this is an isolation plate. Reed blocks have a property of absorbing moisture fluctuations, thus ensuring a pleasant and healthy indoor climate. Even more so if used together with natural plastering, which is a mixture of clay and lime. The reed has similar heat insulation properties as, let's say, rock wool. In addition, plaster holds to these blocks very well. Ja selle eeskool me siis hakkasime tegema pilliroost samu põhu samuse küsid palle ja neid siis, nendest tegime siis ühe katseseina. Teised katseseinad on meil niimoodi samsamult jõudnud nendele lahenduste, kus siis katsetame vertikaalselt pilliroogu, horisontaalselt pilliroogu ja Ja siis teeme siia seina, teeme veel paneelid, mida siis saab monteerida. Et neid ka katsetada, kuidas siis inimene saaks talvel ehitada. Need paneelid valmis ja suvel siis panna nad majasse üles. Scientists have carried out another interesting study to come up with an answer to a frequently asked question of whether rodents might invade the reed and straw. It turned out that mice prefer living in hemp, glass and rock wool, but they don't like the straw and reed. Results of the studies carried out by scientists from Tartu show that the reed biomass panels, which are 45 centimeters thick, act as heat insulators with the same productivity as 25 centimeter panels of stone or glass wool. Now we are in Lihula in Estonia. This grass comes from the nature reservation of Metsalu. It is possible to cut this grass only in autumn and therefore is suitable for the burning in a heating house which operates on this grass all year round. The mowed grass is pressed in blocks weighing several hundreds of kilograms. In the coldest days of winter, to heat the village, it needs 24 such a packs. The hay production costs are approximately 40 euro per ton. One has to pay 45 to 50 euro per megawatt hour of heat nowadays. The old system that used liquid fuel costs 60 euro per megawatt hour. You could also burn reeds in this furnace, which would, however, require minor reconstruction work to be performed. Ja rullid olid purustumata ja tekisid meile etteandmisega probleemid. Ta lihtsalt ei tulnud peale pidevalt, et tekiks pidev, pidev leek sinna sisse. Ja sellega ma siis selle esialgu lõpetasime rullide põletamise, mill see olid nagu purustumata ja proovime edasi teha. This small furnace provides heat to a village in Finland. The school, kindergarten, several houses and for the owner himself. Straw or hay bales are burned and it is said that the furnace does not call for much attention. Use of the reed biomass for fuel is possible. However, a number of nuances should be considered. First, the reed is harder than straw and therefore preparation of blocks or rolls require more energy. Second, the reed might contain potassium and nitrogen compounds. 
veidojot granulus vai briketes, veidojas degot viegli kūstoši pie zemām temperatūrām, kūstoši pelnu. Šie te savienojumi viņi arī noārda katlus, teiksim, korodē, tās režģi un tam līdzīgi. Latvian scientists add peat that is available in Latvia in large quantities to the reed mass. This reduces the risk of corrosion. The company Loka Pelleti supplies fuel to the entire neighborhood. At the plant, pellets are manufactured from any material worth burning, even from waste paper. Those are from the wood, those are from the reed. They even smell reed. The burning rates are quite similar, but the difference is this grows up for the tens of years, but this grows up every year. There are some obstacles to overcome in the process of reed pellet or briquette manufacturing. First, if pellets are made of pure reed, it is difficult to achieve the necessary density, one gram per cubic centimeter. Secondly, the reed does not ensure the durability of the pellet or the briquette necessary for transportation. The already mentioned peat might be of help here. Another problem, reed pellets like straw pellets have a high ash content. This is a furnace system Ecotec made in Sweden that proved to be very suitable because it effectively solves the issue of ash content. In the rotating furnace, pellets are fed from the bottom and burned ones are pushed away, thus making a place for the new ones. Air is supplied from two places, the basic inflow from the bottom and additionally from the side. This allows accurate regulation of the burning process and a maximum reduction of CO2 emissions. It is estimated that wise management of the reed stands would permit use of the reed as fuel. For instance, when cutting and sorting reeds for roofs, defective ones that remain could be collected and crushed for pellets. Also, the reed heat insulation manufacturers have clippings and they seek for an application of this remainder. Latvian scientists are experimenting with various machines and creating unique technologies that ease the grinding of reeds. The greatest attention is being paid to creating small machines that can easily be relocated. Transportēt niedru materiāls, kuras pildītas ar gaisu, ir gaužām dārga. Tehnoloģija labāk izmantot šos te biomateriāls tuvāk tajā vietā, kur viņi aug. It looks like shaving by the earth. For doing that, you need a clear surface. Therefore, the best time for cutting reeds is a winter when it's ice on. The cutting and exporting of reeds is a profitable enterprise both in Latvia and Estonia. Second year reeds are best suited because they have become strong and durable. The reeds are sorted right on the ice to find the right length. This is Pape Lake, the biggest lagoon-type lake in Latvia that is rapidly being invaded by the reed. At the same time, the quality of the reed is compliant with the requirements of the best European thatchers. Therefore, the majority of the reed cut here is transported to Holland, Denmark, Germany and Sweden, to countries with a developed tradition of ecological construction. This is a reed mower, Saige, which can be used for cutting in the summer in shallow water. If the weather conditions are good, this machine can make three to four thousand bundles a day. 
This was a successful year. 12,000 top quality bundles were made. Another obstacle to using of reeds is the seasonal character of cutting. The reed is dry in the winter, and it is only possible to cut it when it has been cold for a longer period of time and there is not too much snow. If snow falls first in winter and only then frost follows, one might fail to cut a single reed as the ice over the lake is not stable enough. In summer, cutting is only useful if your aim is the reduction of reed stands or the use of the green wet reeds for biomass. Therefore, it is difficult to estimate the reed product volumes. The mowing of reeds is often considered to be environmentally damaging. Many types of water birds and insects live in reeds. Is the environment being damaged by this harvesting? Today, especially in the protected areas, nature protection is often misunderstood by the people. So trees grow instead of shrubs. In autumn, their leaves fall in water and the bank slowly changes. In places where waves used to wash organic parts ashore and thus prevent their sedimentation in the lake, those are now covered by extensive reed beds, resulting in poorer biological diversity. <laughs> It turns out that only a few types of birds live in reeds and most create their nests on the very edges of reed areas so they can quickly swim out or hide if they are in danger. Scientists believe that a smart and rational utilization of shore areas doesn't damage, but instead enhances the biosphere, and in fact, provides nesting areas for even more birds. It is best if areas where reeds grow are a mosaic, in some places allowing free access to the shoreline, while in other places allowing the reeds to expand and grow. During the implementation of the Cofrein project, scientists discovered that it is important to arrive at complex solutions. Solutions where reeds are cut locally for thatching, while residue is used for heat insulation blocks and fuel materials. Due to the problematic handling of reeds, it would not be useful to work only within one or another area of use. The key benefits from reed processing would be increasing the biological diversity of the environment, the use of a biological, natural material, and facilitating the employment of local farmers. This project has proved the future potential in the use of reed. Apart of being a construction material, it could be also used as a renewable energy resource, which is a topical issue all over the European Union. In Latvia, cutting of reeds in lakes near the sea is regulated by local authorities, and presently only a tiny portion of the available volumes is cut. Finland plans to subsidize landowners. Estonia and Latvia do not plan such earmarked subsidies at present. But the scientists in all three countries are actively continuing the search for the best and most economically advantageous ways to use reed biomass.